Hello students. In this lesson, let us discuss about the characteristics of a good stone. Generally, a good stone has many characteristics. So we we'll list them one by one and see what exactly each one has to mean. So totally there are 16 characteristics, important characteristics. The first one is the appearance and color. So highly colored stones are normally used for your architectural purposes. So highly colorful stones are used for what? For your architectural purposes. But the problem is these stones are very soft and hence this will be very less durable. So therefore what we have to do is we have to go for lighter stones than that of the darker stones. So that's your first characteristics going for lighter stores when compared to the darker stones because lighter stones are more stronger. Right. The second one is the strength. So when we have to talk about the strength, strength is nothing but it is the power of a stone to sustain pressure. So how much of pressure it can take that is nothing but the strength of stone. So this can be also called as the resistance to crushing force. So generally if the stone is or the stone has a very compact fine crystalline texture Compact means what? The molecules are very near to each other and they are very fine molecules and in the form of crystalline in nature. Then those types of stones will be stronger. Okay, so generally if you have to call a stone as a good stone, then its crushing strength should not be less than 100 Newton per mm square. So let me write it in words also so that you can remember easily. Not less than 100 Newton per mm square. So if in case we go for igneous rocks or stones, their crushing strength is generally in the range of 100 to 350 Newton per mm square. So these type of igneous rocks are more stronger than your metamorphic or sedimentary rocks. So out of the different types of rocks what we have, the igneous rocks are more stronger because their compressive strengths rise in the range of 100 to 350 Newton per mm square. Next, the third property is the structure, the structure of stone. So as mentioned here, a stone which has compact, fine and crystalline texture are stronger in nature. So a good stone should be either closely grained or crystalline in nature and also it should have uniform texture that is it should have same configuration throughout its formation okay uniform texture and also the structure of the stone should be in such a way that it should be free from any cavities what do you mean by cavities cavities are nothing but certain gaps or holes in the stone. Also, they should be free from cracks. There should not be any cracks in the stone. Moving on to the fourth one, the fourth property is the hardness. So a good stone is the one which should have enough hardness or it should be hard enough to resist 
the abrasive forces abrasive forces are nothing but the rubbing forces which will come on to your stones and these abrasive forces are caused because of what they are caused due to the wear and friction so generally the hardness of the stone is tested by the los angeles abrasion test this anyways we will study in the further chapters the details of this test for just information we have been giving this and this test is a laboratory test but if in case on field you want to test a stone you have to just scratch it and see from a knife and you will come to know the hardness property of the stone the sixth property is the toughness generally a good stone should be tough enough so that it can withstand the stresses that are coming on to the stone may be because of any vibrations of either machinery and also because of any moving loads which are coming on to the stone the sixth property is the heaviness generally if the stone is more heavier then they are more compact more compact means what they will have less porosity so wherever i mention a arrow it is the meaning of more and wherever i mention the lower arrow that is the meaning of less okay less porosity and if there is less porosity it will have more or greater specific gravity so generally if there is a very good building stone the specific gravity of the specific gravity generally also is denoted as sp gr or capital g this for a very good building stone the range should be between 2.4 to 2.8 for a good building stone and also if you are going for the construction in waters like weirs dams barricades retaining walls then we have to use higher or heavier variety of stones when compared to your lightweight stones because they will have more compact and less porous structure in nature moving on to the next property the seventh property it is nothing but the durability so what is durability it is nothing but the power of the stone to resist atmospheric or any other external effects so generally the stone which is compact crystalline and free from pores and also the stone which contains a certain amount of silicas will be more durable than that of the stone that is just containing certain calcareous substances okay the next property is the porosity and absorption so generally good stone is the one which does not have more porosity or you can call it as should not be porous and also when it comes to the absorption it should not absorb water more than 5% of its weight when you are immersing this in cold water for about 24 hours okay so generally if you want to know the porosity of uh, some standard type of stones or the water absorption so type of stone i'll write here and water absorption so i'll write it in percentage not greater than okay so if it is sandstone limestone and shale then the water absorption is not more than or not greater than 10% the second category is granite genesis and slate 
so their percentage is 1% then your tape it is about 6% and your quartzite it's about 3% so these are some of the common percentages of water absorption the next property is the seasoning qualities so generally a good stone should have good seasoning properties what will happen is all the stone will contain certain amount of moisture which is known as your query sap stones so what are query sap stones all stones containing moisture so what will happen is generally a period of 3 to 6 months of seasoning will be enough for the stone to come under usable conditions after they have been queried okay the next point is the fire resistance so a good building stone should have a proper fire resistance so generally the basalt and trape stones are having the highest quality of fire resistance property in comparison to your igneous rocks and your metamorphic rocks generally the igneous rocks and metamorphic rocks or stones are very weak against your fire the next property is the decomposition so generally what will happen is the gases in the atmosphere or the acids in rainwater tend to dissolve certain constituents of your stone which will make the stone to decay so what will happen they will cause the stone decay so your stone should have a good building stone should have resistance against decomposition next 12th one is the disintegration so what will happen in cold countries is your water tends to freeze in the stone the water which is captured in the stone will tend to freeze and this will in turn what your it will make the stone to expand so this expansion of a stone will cause the disintegration of the stone so the stone should be in such a way that's why the stone should be of low porosity so if there is low porosity the water will not go and stay inside the stone and thus the disintegration will not happen so a good stone is the one which will not disintegrate the next property is your reliability so a stone which is exposed to any condition should be reliable reliable means what should have good quality that's all okay so exposed to anything the stone should be good in quality nothing but reliable the next property is the weight so generally this is the most important property of the stone so this depends upon the type of the structure of the stone in which we are using this particular stone okay suppose we are using it for bridges and dams we should go for very heavier stones and if you are going for arches walls and dooms then we have to go for lighter stones so let me write it for you so that you can remember so for dams bridges retaining walls we have to go for heavier stones and if you are going for arches 
worlds and dooms go for lighter stones the next property is the weathering property so what is weathering property it is nothing but the resistance of the stone against against your wear and tear especially because of the natural agencies and generally these resistance against your natural agencies for a stone should be very high the next property is the workability so the stone which we use should be workable enough so that we can do the cutting dressing and also bring it out into the required shape and size uh, for whatever purpose we are using it okay bringing it out in the required shape and size if it is not workable there are chances that the stone will become very uneconomical moving on to the last property that is the thermal moment so this is the most important property of the stone why because this thermal moment is the one which is of some trouble see generally what will happen suppose it is a marble stone say one side of the marble stone is exposed to heat when this side is exposed this side tends to wrap up because the heat conduction is not proper and on cooling the slab will not come back to its original shape or size okay so the thermal moment of heat is very important or else there is chances that the deterioration or the distortion of the stone will take place so these are some of the important characteristics which a building stone should possess in order to say that it is a good stone so based on where exactly we are using it and for what purpose we are using it we can choose the characteristic accordingly okay i hope the lesson is clear to you thank you